One way to destroy a culture is to make sure children don't speak the language of their parents and grandparents. We are painfully familiar with that strategy here in Canada, and the United Nations says that that is what is happening now in Tibet. A group of UN experts is reporting that about 1 million Tibetan children have been forcibly placed in Chinese residential schools, and those children are losing their identity. Gia Lo has seen this close up. As a scholar, he visited schools in Tibetan regions in China, but members of his own family have gone to such boarding schools. We reached him in Ottawa. What do you believe is happening to Tibetan children at these schools? Recently, China implementing a boarding preschool policy. So our age four to six kids being kept in a boarding preschool. It's a boarding preschool. Do you believe it's a forced assimilation? Uh, Yes, definitely. Why? Because the parent has no choice. There's no any other alternative choice for them. The parent has to send their kids, even though they don't uh, want it, but they have no other choice. By intimidation, one is... If they don't send their kids to boarding preschool, then later on they cannot get a real one, which is they have, won't get the education. So if they don't go to these boarding schools, then the yeah. rest won't follow. They can't go to grade one and the rest of the school system. I understand. Yeah. This is the first. The second intimidation is they're going to block the government system. Uh, if there are any uh, benefits or refer from the government system, they're going to block parents. So it affects their whole lives, uh, yep. not just yeah. not just in the classroom. I know you have grandnieces, Gyalo. You got a call from yep. your brother about them. Why was he worried about those girls? Be- because those two grandnieces has changed the emotions, the behavior. And the way of the communicating with their grandparents and the parents. What did you see when you went to visit them? I closely observed those two grandmates, the behavior. They're not hugging parents and the grandparents. They just, during the dinner time, they did not engage the family conversation and then are sitting there as a guest or a stranger. So that's that catch my serious attention. Yeah. So later on, I observe they're playing, and then they just purely speaking Mandarin without any single Tibetan word there. And how old are they? Uh, at that time, they're one is the age of four, one mm-hmm. age five. And what were they like before they started going? Before they hugging parents, uh, engaging while. Parents having a conversation, they just interrupting by their interest. It's in quite mutual in the home. And they were speaking only Mandarin, as you said, after yeah. they went to the school. Yeah. What do you think they are being taught there that's making them not want to hug their family members? I think the content of the teaching and the teaching language all shifted to the Chinese language and the Chinese culture. And then they kept our kids in school for five nights and it's five days of the seven. That must be so, so difficult for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they deal with it emotionally, your your brother and his family? My brother and the sister-in-law, they've uh, never been at a school. They don't know how to interpret it, mm-hmm. but they notice that something changed radically after being sent to that boarding preschool. The loss of language. What it's kind of not, impact does it have on Tibetan families such as yours, but also Tibetan culture? Yeah, it's not about the loss of language. It's the psychological change. And the behavior and the way they see the outside. And also, they could not be able to fluently communicate with their parents and grandparents. I wonder what your brother uh, and his wife, how they feel about losing that connection. Yeah, they're worried, more worried, practically worried about 
grandchildren are becoming stranger. And from the those two grandnies, their family is becoming a stranger to them. As an so educational sociologist, I thought this is not a unique case in only with my family. China has been implementing that policy across Tibet. As many as possible, I visit. From 50 to 52 boarding preschool, almost the conclusion was exactly the same as I saw in my family. So I had a chance to talk to students, parents, teachers, and the local community stakeholders, all saying the same content. China, though, the Chinese government says it's not doing anything wrong and calls all of this a, a false narrative. You say you're seeing yeah, dozens and dozens think, of examples. Yeah, I estimate that those are cases in the Bodium preschool. It's more than 150,000 cases are there. It's a conservative calculation, I think, mm-hmm. for my personal calculation based on where I visited. You're in Ottawa right now. Yeah. What are yeah. you trying to do to, to change what's happening? Um, I think we need a Canada to speak out. First of all, or foremost, in the House of Commons and from Prime Minister Trudeau at the UN, China cares what the world thinks. That's why they're keeping this uh, secret. Yalo, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Gia Lo is a Tibetan scholar who works with the Tibet Action Institute. He was in Ottawa.